Hello and welcome. My name is Solitaire Townsend of the Futera Solutions Union and we're here to have a talk about the climate and nature emergency and why all of us, businesses, governments and individuals have got to play our part. We also want to talk about the role of technology in both decarbonising our economies and also seeing whether we can contribute to nature. Now, we've got a little bit of an exciting announcement coming up in a few minutes, which is why I'm so pleased to welcome here Alex from Cotil, the Chief Commercial Officer of Vodafone Group. Glad to be with you. And also Tanya Steele, the CEO of WWF UK. Pleasure to join you. So, Tanya, I'm going to start with you. I mentioned just then about the climate and nature emergency, but where are we? How bad is it? I mean, there's no doubt we are facing a climate and nature crisis. It's two sides of the same coin. And just recent WWF research, we published our latest Living Planet report a few weeks ago, really laid this out in stark uh, detail. Uh, I mean, average wildlife populations have declined by nearly 70% in the last 50 years. 70%? <laughs> It, it's a huge, huge loss. And it's also sadly a proxy measure that we are destroying so much of our natural environment. And if wildlife can't survive, then neither can we. And looking around the world, there's almost some worst examples. So uh, Latin America saw a 94% average decline. And Latin America is home to the Amazon rainforest. If we lose the Amazon rainforest, there is no place on Earth that is safe from climate change. So the results are very stark, the data is very stark, but ultimately there is an opportunity for us to do something here. Just this last summer, uh, so many of us have seen wildfires running across all parts of the world. We've mm. had biblical level floods in Pakistan. So I think it's really highlighted to all of us consumers, you know, every one of us in our day to day working lives that actually this emergency is it's here, it's now and we need to take some steps and play our part in doing something to stop it. Wow, absolutely. Thank you so much, Tanya. And um, Alex, I know you're a huge enthusiast yes. of the role that technology can play in exactly um, these challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about what Vodafone Group is doing sure. to, to deploy that uh, technology for these problems? Yeah, so, so we have 100,000 employees across the world who, who just share one common belief, frankly, which is together we can. Together, meaning you, us, you, individuals, businesses, NGOs, together we can use technology for good. Right? So it's really about bringing technology and the human spirit, the human creativity, to solve some of those societal challenges which we're all facing, climate change being, of course, our number one. Yeah? So that's really at the heart of what we do. And of course, then I think about, so very practically, Vodafone, what are you doing about it? Eh? And, uh, and we're very committed to becoming a net zero organization. Net zero in terms of scope one, scope two uh, mm -hmm. by 2030. Yeah? and then scope uh, three by 2040. Alex, just for a second, yeah, scope sure. one, two and three, not everybody's familiar with this ter terminology. So scope one and two is direct emissions and from the energy that you buy and use, and then scope three is everything else from consumers using your products to your supply chain. Did I get that right? Yeah, so let me give you an example, right? Uh, scope one and two is the energy we use to power up our networks. Mm -hmm. And so we've done a massive effort already in Europe to run all of our networks on 100% renewable energy. So that's really important because actually 80% of the emissions of Vodafone is the network, the energy we mm. consume. Yeah. So we've done a fantastic job already in Europe. And I'm glad to say COP27 was also an important moment for us because mm. we managed to also in Egypt to commit to be able to run our Egyptian business on 100% renewable energy. So Europe now tackling Africa. So very exciting. But that's what we do internally. Yeah. Mm. And scope three, to your point, mm. is also the whole ecosystem we work with. And mm. a big part when you think about telecom operators, etc. a big part of what we do is, of course, is use a phone. Mm. Right? So it's very important that we tackle the carbon emission coming from this part of the industry. Right? And when you think about what we can do, it's very much about trying to prolong the life of this hardware, of all the tech that you use. I'm sure you have tons of tech at home. Uh, uh, typically in a, in a classic household, you know, you can see 20 plus pieces of hardware in every given household. That's a lot. What are we doing about it? Hmm. And that's really the spirit of what we want to tackle. So this sounds like there's quite an exciting potential here yes. that we might hear a little bit more about in a minute. But first, let's take a look at how all of this might come together.
So I noticed the panda in that film. Yes. I think that might be a bit of a hint <laughs> to what we're announcing today. So Alex, do you want to no, lay it out for us? Together we can. And Together is about a fantastic partnership. I'm super glad to announce of WWF coming together with Vodafone on a three-year partnership to really be able to tackle the climate change with the use of technology. And it's all about identifying opportunities to use technology to tackle some of the topics that you know very well, of course, uh, across the globe. So that's the scope of the partnership. Uh, we want to anchor it in something very tangible, short term, uh, and that is really an appeal to be able to collect one million phones for the planet across our different footprint. Uh, and we really want to basically encourage customers here to trade in their old hardware, their unused, maybe sometimes unloved pieces of hardware. I'm sure you have many, uh, many at home. Uh, and we're going to ask them to trade them in. We will actually then refurbish them, recycle them, make sure you can actually sometimes resell them, take them, send them to Africa so maybe so other people can start being connected for the first time. So a big program to be able to extend the life of phones. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So, Tanya, why is it important for WWF to have these kind of partnerships with businesses? I think it's incredibly important. I mean, we know well, many businesses share with us, as well as the science that we produce, that they too are seeing the impact of the nature crisis and the climate crisis on their own business, whether this is in terms of water stressed areas, but also actually in terms of our very, very precious raw materials and natural resources. I often say we've only got one planet shop here. There's only one set of resources that are available and they will not last endlessly. So this desire to reduce, reuse, recycle is incredibly important as we kind of steward our use of nature and our use of natural resources in the world. But I guess also more generally, I'm conscious that um, businesses play such a big role in our economies and create the conditions where as consumers we can make a choice because this is a choice. This is about how we live our lives. This is about the choices that we make in terms of how we consume and how we ensure that we're playing our part in ensuring that we've got a healthy planet for future generations to come. Brilliant. So um, I'm so excited about this because I've got a drawer at oh, home. And some of the tech in that drawer goes back to the late 1900s, actually. I, we'll, I we'll take them. We'll exactly. Take them. So, so you'll take it all for, for, yeah. from, from any provider? Yeah, listen, just to, to maybe just share a bit how this works, right? Um, when, when you buy a phone, of course, there has been first some extraction of rare materials to make the phone, mm -hmm. to manufacture the mm -hmm. phone. The phone then has been, of course, transported, distributed, mm -hmm. used, and sometimes when you also have to deal with the end of life of the phone. That's a very big process. And if we're able to really take it at the right time and double the lifetime of that phone, we will save 50 kilograms of CO2 emission per phone. 50? Yeah, 50. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an impact that's relevant for every individual when they make that choice. Yeah. So that's really the, the, the spirit of uh, what we want to do. It's very important, of course, for us that uh, we get volume uh, because volume makes the difference in this case. Uh, and particularly for each phone that we will actually be getting, we will be able to contribute another pound to one of the amazing initiatives that WWF is uh, doing across the world. So it's a nice uh, self-funding activity going on here. Yeah. Well, I too have got a, um, a drawer full of old phones, so I will be emptying them because I think it's important. Um, this is both an opportunity to reduce our footprint on yeah. the planet and actually keep all the, the rare, rare materials, you know, very much in cycle. Um, but as you say, it's also a chance to do something for our really precious conservation uh, around the world so that we can enjoy that uh, in years to come as well. Do you mind if I just jump on this okay. conservation piece? Because, of course, today we're, we're focusing on the announcement of our partnership and this first initiative of uh, One Million Phones. But I can see so much more we can do. Uh, we've had some great partnerships already at the local level in South Africa in the past. And recently, a colleague was telling me about one of the challenges uh, in, uh, in Kenya, actually, around the coexistence of uh, wildlife and humans in rural villages and the potential use of technology to help monitor the location of wildlife, avoid that friction. And when I heard you in the beginning talk about all these endangered species disappearing, can we do something? I don't want to brainstorm here, <laughs> but, but I think there's... Let's no brainstorm. Way. Let's brainstorm. So, uh, Tanya, I know you travel the world and you see this firsthand. Have you seen examples of technology do this? I, I, I mean, constantly. I mean, one of the great things about mobile technology and digital technology is it's available in so many right. different settings around the world. And people there actually are thinking about how they can use it in terms of connecting with each other. But again, certainly in terms of ensuring that we keep wildlife safe, but also community safe 
safe as yes. well. And this can be everything from uh, solar powered electric fences through to actually sometimes warning calls to let people know maybe there's um, a group of elephants migrating uh, and actually are they going to trample over some crops in a village? So how can we create enough warning so that um, local communities can manage as well? So the access is there. It's about, I think, using some of the creativity and the know-how um, that Alex talked about at the start and how we can apply that, but particularly with the ideas and the ingenuity of the communities themselves. This is brilliant. Let's take it back to people for a minute. So we've talked about the draw, we've talked about the um, bringing back mobile phones. Is it important for us as individuals to take a role in this? It is, and, and we know that people feel so overwhelmed by the crisis at the moment. They're yes. really worried. And what do you do? And mm. when you feel overwhelmed, how do you actually take some of those steps? So I think providing the chance to take some steps while still enabling people to live their lives, we're going to need, rightly so, mobile technology for many years to come. So I think um, taking this opportunity to do that and lighten our footprint on the planet, I think is really, it's great. So this is great. It's an action that we can all take. It doesn't cost us anything, and yet it's contributing. And of course, there's also other people. There's all the people who work at, uh, yes. at Vodafone and at WWF. I know many of them are watching. Is there a way that they can get involved? Yeah, this, this program is very much about personal choice as an individual, and consumers can make that personal choice, and our employees also can make that personal choice. And I'm encouraging, of course, our 100,000 employees across the globe to go to their drawers, take all the tech they can, and really start this process of trading, trading in their products, uh, recycling them. So really a call for action to my own uh, colleagues and employees. But you know, the, you were talking about the cost of living crisis. Mm -hmm. and I think it's a, it's a very relevant topic. And, and I, so, I think also it's a great opportunity now that if you're trading in your old phone, you actually get great, great, great value for that. So mm -hmm. think about it not only in terms of the planet environment, but this can really help out in the cost of living crisis that we're, we're going through right now. So this sounds like it's a win for us, it's a win for the environment, um, and hopefully it's a win for the future. Thank you so very much, Alex. Thank you so very much, Tanya. Thank you, everyone, for joining about this very exciting new partnership. And watch this space for more. <laughs> Deal is done. <laughs>